What's up, everybody? It's time for another edition of Keeping It Plus Ultra with Blur Without Fear. And today I'm going to be talking with TJ and Spencer Sterling, it's the co-founders of Ray Comics. These guys have put together some amazing work. Our main topic today is mostly going to be talking about their uh, recent Kickstarter success, Joystick Angels, which is about a group of black and brown kids who band together as space pilots to try and save the Earth from this alien invasion. And we're also going to be talking about one of their previous efforts, Okamus, a comic with very strong Super Sentai and Power Ranger inspirations about a group of black and brown people who basically become Super Sentai-style warriors. We're also going to be talking about the origins of the Spencer Brothers. We're also going to be talking about the processes that they went through to get the Kickstarter off the ground and how they work together to you know, create the properties that they create. And we're going to also talk about a lot of other non-sequitur things. All that said, there's going to be links in the description of all these guys on social media and also links if you want to check out their comics. I'll have their website down in the uh, description for this below or if you're watching this on YouTube. It'll also be in the description as well as a pinned comment below. Anyways, let's not stand on ceremony. It's time to keep it plus ultra with Blur Without Fear. Word the wise, grass only greener when it's fertilized. Gave them truth in these songs, they prefer the lies. That's any beautiful adrift in her purple lies. You can't see me, you see me. Wondering how I reach more evolutions than Evie and make it look easy. We are back in the building. We got the Sterling brothers with us and yeah, I just want to like, you know, we're talking about the you know, Kickstarter. Uh, dude, Kickstarter, first off, uh, congratulations uh, on thank the Kickstarter. Y'all uh, came out of the gate. Uh, I think, what was it? Uh, started at, was it 8K? Yes, sir. Uh, 8K to start out. And dude, like, just finished like crazy strong. I think right. I think I think as the time at the time of uh, because the Kickstarter ended was uh, just as past uh, a couple Saturday. of days ago, this past Saturday. Mm -hmm. I think y'all right. closed out with like twenty something, like twenty something k or something. Twenty three, twenty three, twenty three and change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I like I said we're gonna get to all the good stuff, but uh, one thing I did want to ask is. Um, you know, like how, like, like how long have y'all, how, like, like how long y'all been in the comics, man? Like, 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 what's your, like, what's your vibe uh, with comics? Like, what, what kind of stuff are y'all into? Hi, that's a great question, man. I mean, um, me and my brother both started collecting comics in the late eighties, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, we were both fans of different types of books. And my brother was really into Spawn. I was into a lot of Marvel stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, we've been comic collectors forever, and I. Mean, I always wanted to draw comics though. That was, was like my thing. You know, I, I got really inspired by like Jim Lee, Todd McFarlane, those artists coming up. So um, it was one of those things. Like I went to high school really for art. I went to college for art. Mm -hmm. um, I interned at Marvel and, you know, got my like know-how of Damn. like, yeah, how to like <laughs> work in a comic book company or how to at least run one. Mm -hmm. And uh, from that, like I debuted Ray Comics in 2015 and been publishing since then. But going to cons since 05. I mean, I've been in, in the space for a long time, actually. Mm. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 what about now, uh, now, TJ, what about you though? Like you say, you, uh, I guess you say you're like spawn and, uh, and like some of the, like, I guess like probably like more like the image comic stuff. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, spawn, um, like just something about spawn. Man, I, I've always loved anti-heroes. Mm -hmm. So that's why I like stuff like um, Punisher, Spawn, like those type of characters and even something like Silver Surfer. Um, but, uh, you know, just something about the aesthetic. It was different than the regular Superman, Batman. Like there's nothing wrong with those comic books. Yeah. But, you know, and then we find out that he's a black guy. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And it was just like, OK, there's a reason why I really love this comic book. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, man, those type of characters, anti heroes, have always been my favorite, hands down. Yeah, I'm, saying, I'm, I'm a street level guy, like myself. I like uh, I like my I like my superheroes like down there, kind of in the grit, uh, the yep. grit and the grind. <laughs> uh, huge huge fan of uh, like I've well, always been a fan of Daredevil. Uh, if, if the name doesn't ever give it away. Uh, but uh, one of my favorite runs of Black Panther is when he's not even in Wakanda; he's just down there in the streets. Just you know, nice. handling business, 
Uh, yeah, just beating up street criminals. <laughs> oh, <right>. uh, <laughs> yeah, with, with, uh, like d- doesn't even got the vibranium suit anymore. He just out here, just regular degular. Word, but yeah. um, but yeah, like I, I love stuff like that. Like uh, yeah, even like you know, getting out of the anti-hero stuff. Like you get you know, like your Spider Man and your uh, you guys like that. Um, yeah, any, any anybody that's actually down there on street level actually dealing with like real. Uh, like real stuff, like stuff that actually That's like right. affects, you know, like I'm like, all right, cool. I, I, I get behind that guy. I get behind that guy. Um, yeah. But uh, now I notice, like, you know, looking at uh, joystick angels. Uh, I'll tell you, like, the like, like before I even for before I even looked at, like, the press release and you know, all other stuff, like I, I actually had already seen uh, joystick angels because I kind of casually skim through Kickstarter because I have a problem. Uh, but uh, <laughs> like my problem. <laughs> yeah. I had to I had to uninstall Kickstarter off my phone for a while. So uh, because <laughs> I'm I'm always like, ooh, ooh, what's that? Oh, cool. Let me get that. Oh, no, I'm like five, six projects a month, like like a month, sometimes a week, man. It's, it's a problem. It's an addiction, dude. It hurts. It hurts, dude. It hurts. I I I I understand it, man. I'm I'm like. Right there with you. Um, <laughs> the day that I the the day that I hit over, um, uh, I think it was the day like I got an email. And they're like, "You've backed over 100 projects on Kickstarter." I was like, "That's nothing I want to be proud of." <laughs> I mean, I'm proud that I've helped people achieve their dreams, but man, I don't want y'all to remind me. Uh, <laughs> but um, but no. So one of the things that, that really kind of stuck out to me though with. Uh, with Joystick Angels, you know, the, the vibe, the aesthetic, you know, the characters, uh, the first thing it put me in the mind of, and a lot of folks who follow, follow the channel, folks who have been with me for a while. Y'all, y'all probably already, they're probably already rolling their eyes right now because they know exactly what I'm about to say. Uh, the, <laughs> the first thing I started thinking of was one of my favorite seasons of, uh, Super Sentai, uh, Kaizoku Sentai Gokaiger. Where uh, it's like a bunch of space pirates trying to save the earth, even though technically they're not really they they're just kind of there. Uh they they weren't really looking for to, to help anybody, just so happened the problem that they were already fighting was already there. But just like not even so much from like the premise of the story or anything, but just like the at like I guess kind of like the 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 attitude of the characters, the way they carry themselves. Uh but like that was the first thing. So like it was already an instantaneous lock uh with me. <laughs> Cause I was like, oh wait, they got ships. They're 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 black and brown. Yep. All right, they're saving the planet. All right, let's go. <laughs> oh, I don't need to know the rest. Some folks need. I'm, I'm totally with that. <laughs> but yeah, like like what was like for for you guys though? What was uh you know, the the whole ins like the inspiration uh behind Joystick Angels? Was it always like a conscious uh effort to say, hey, look, we want to put you know, these black and brown characters front and center or was just something just kind of came up organically. Like, like what, what, what was the score? What was the score on uh joystick angels? It's a great question. I mean, honestly, I love when people ask me this because it was really an organic thing. I mean, my brother and I, we, you know, we love space opera stuff growing up. I mean, our mm-hmm. father was a big Trekkie and, you know, star Wars guy, and, you know, he loved, you know, aliens and just, you know, mm-hmm. conspiracy theory stuff. And, you know, Deep Space Nine and Babylon 5 and all these great television series and movies that had, you know, space exploration. Um, but I never remember seeing enough diversity. I never remember seeing enough people that look like me. One or two didn't really count. And this is supposed to be the future, you know, where we're past this whole racism thing, yet there's still a diversity problem with it in terms of how the cast is. So with Joyce the Games, it was like one of those things like, man, it'd be dope if there was a space opera series that was centered around young black children who were just in space doing cool stuff. They didn't have any powers. They weren't you know, superheroes. They were just incredibly brilliant and skilled individuals. You know what I'm saying? They're just regular kids with, in, in a slightly irregular world. That's right. um, but, you know, we love Star Fox. We love Gradius. We love Darius Twin. Those like old 80s to 90s video games, 8-bit style. So uh, we kind of wanted to do a little bit of an homage to that, something where it was like, we would love to see our people in this space in the future doing really cool stuff. And that's kind of like the initial idea of where it came from. That's mm-hmm. right. Now, uh, the, 
the the other thing I wanted to uh, bring up too, because this is actually something that I thought was also really interesting as well, especially because of the uh, the conversations uh, that uh, that kind of came out uh, back when. Oh man, it feels like because you know, 2020 was such a uh, a weird year. But yeah, we kind of go back yes. to you know, last year, kind of earlier this year, where everybody was talking about the movie um, uh, Soul uh by a disney uh, yeah. pixar and everybody yeah. was like oh man dude why is every time man we get a brother or a sister you know in one of these movies man they always got to be changed and they got to they, yeah. they turn them into some kind of you know monster or something <laughs> or an animal or something yeah. like that but one of the things i actually thought was really cool about this like yeah you like all of your you you're pretty much all your principal characters uh you know they you know these they're all you know black and brown characters but one of the things i actually thought was really cool though and, and i don't know what kind of uh went into to the process of this as well but uh one of the characters uh in the joystick angels is not human that's but, correct. uh but but i dug the fact they were still brown <laughs> 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 and i appreciate yeah. that like like what like you know i i know she said you you talked about you know, babylon uh, five Deep Space Nine by by one of my personal uh favorite Star Treks, um, because you know, Cisco is that dude. You know, we 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 gotta respect Cisco. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> 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 uh, but no, like, what was um, like when well uh, the i the idea to add in like an alien character. Uh, like, well, like what what brought like was that that same influence of the Star Trek and kind of like just overall sci fi. Uh, space opera uh, influence yeah of course man um so when it comes to specific influence from star trek or star wars Mm -hmm. those two specifically there was always some like they were always like exploring these different uh like these different um i don't even know how to describe it other than a planet and Mm -hmm. then there would just be like these weird uh things that we had never seen before and I'm just like, okay, whether it was they were on the, the actual team that they were exploring with or it was a planet that they went to, that's where some of that inspiration came from. And then uh, as we started putting the team together, it was like, okay, well, th- we can also think about this from a technical aspect as well. Because if you think about like a parakeet or a bird that they would always send into a mine, mm-hmm. and then if it came back, okay, the mine was cool to work in. So mm-hmm. when they're in these these um, these deep space explorations, these hybrid animals, they can go places that humans can't. All right. So mm-hmm. a- every team has a humanoid or an animal type character on their team to help with that type of exploration. So, you know, other than the inspiration, there was just like I said, a technical component as well. That's really cool because it, it comes it, it makes it organic part of the story, not just a just because. Uh, That's so, right. Yeah, <laughs> but I but I dig like like all the influences though. Like like I could uh like I could see it like just the uh all the different vibes. Like I would like because like really looking at it, like it took me back to that. Like I, I'm gonna call it the golden age. Uh, I'm gonna call it the golden age of anime right. for me. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm almost forty years old. So I, that when I was watching anime, it was it was uh Voltron. Uh, you know, Transor Z and you know, Sailor Moon, all this other stuff. I, I don't, all this newfangled stuff is great. Don't get me wrong. I love it. It's fine. But to me, that golden age, like when I used to come home from school and yep. you know, they'd have two Nami run, like, hey, look, we're about to hit you with some Dragon Ball Z. We hit you with some Gundam. We're going to hit you with yep. that. That's the like, those were the vibes, uh, that, that I was getting, uh, like off this, uh, this comic. And it was, it just, it felt, like like I was like I was like man I feel like somebody wrote this they wrote this for me yeah you <laughs> <laughs> wrote it for us <laughs> but no, it, it felt like 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 the the but the the anime kind of the, the kind of anime influence though um like what what was it for y'all like what what kind of like was there any like specific uh, anime that came up in mind uh for y'all when y'all were uh like when, when it was like like the stuff that I guess kind of informed uh on the on the on this comic yeah i mean you know honestly man we love the the same genre and the mm-hmm. same space of an you know time period that you liked anime we love mm-hmm. that that was like early 90s 
you know what I'm saying, all the way into like the late 90s, mm. Tsunami, whatever kind of like trickle into like, you know, the weird little offshoot stations, local stations and whatnot. Right. So, I mean, we were always huge fans of Gundam, mm. you know, huge fans of, uh, you know, Pat Libor, Bubblegum Crisis, The Giver, oh. Berserk. Oh, uh, <laughs> Start like. <laughs> name my favorites. Right, right, right. I mean, all that was in there. I mean, you know, I think for me too. Like, I mean, understanding from an artistic standpoint, because I even took animation classes in high school and college, and understood like how much work it took to produce these. It made me respect and, and just love anime even more because they were working twice as hard in Asia versus what we were doing here in the U S you know what I'm saying? So you just had like a different level of um, quality on these animes. Mm -hmm. And and we just, I guess when we were thinking joystick angels, we were thinking more of the space component, but we knew we wanted it to look like it could be, it could sit next to those other popular animes at that time. So we Mm -hmm. consciously picked an artist that could, give us that vibe, you know what I'm saying? Without necessarily right. hitting people over the head with the idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, no, I, I, I dig the vibe. I dig the whole vibe, the, the, the art direction, like everything just kind of fits. Like the, the pieces just kind of come together. They fit perfectly. Uh, just the, the, the way the characters look, the you know the you know the the clothes they wear you know even the way the ships look uh like some of the layouts there's some layouts here and i'm and i'm gonna try and big brain here and remember to uh kind of uh flashes in here when i uh, do the video version of this uh so those of you are listening in podcast format you'll just have to go look at the video i'm sorry or or go to the (laughs) website go to just i'm just telling you just go see for yourself you have to see it for yourself i can't show you but you have to see it but man like there were a, a couple of shots where I was like, man, dude, oh man, this feels like Voltron. Yeah. People keep man. asking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're going to come together. So, right. Yeah. I mean, we're kind of inspired by the mm-hmm. idea. Like we had mm-hmm. no plans to do that, but mm-hmm. that's right. you never know right. for issue two, three, four, man. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, just even like you kind of going to like, a, um, uh, you know, you look at stuff like Macross. Or uh, you know, battle tech, or you know, whatever like that. Like th- those were like some things. I was like, yeah, you know, I was like, dude, if one of these, if, if one or more of these ships just start turning to you know humanoid, you know, fighting machines, I mean, I'm I'm not gonna be mad about it. Yeah, yeah I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be upset. I, I just won't yeah. let it be known. But uh, but no, I but I like the way like you know, when you would show the team in the uh like like the shots that you expect to see. In something like this, like you, when I when I watch uh, Macross and they're in the ship, and you get that kind of like where, uh, best way to describe is you, you get that shot where you're looking up at the character, like almost like you're, it's almost like the camera is in the floorboard, <laughs> right, the cockpit, the like shot, yeah. right, like you, you're so you're watching these like shifted gears and stuff. You know, this guy's getting ready, to, like he's about to blow somebody up. Yeah. And like it was like there was one of those shots. And I was like, "Oh, dude, this looks awesome." Man, oh yeah. man, this looks so cool. Dude's like, "Oh man, he's probably about to shift." I was like, "This looks like he's just, he's getting right. It's about to turn to a giant robot." I was like, "Oh man." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just I, I love it the way the ships would kind of like format and you know they they you know, kind of get in formation around one another. Um, like I said, it's just it's really cool stuff. And uh, the fact that each of these characters like they all have like distinct looks. Uh, like they they have the color. Like kind of like 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 you watch the like Power Rangers, Super Sentai, like everybody, oh, everybody has a color that they yeah. always wear. Like they all have the color, but it's not like so obvious a color. That's like right. you know, it's yeah. like like yo, this guy he wears a lot of red. It's it's okay, it's okay. He wears a lot of red. Mm-hmm. It's fine, but he's not like he's not like over wearing it. Like this guy he wears a little bit of green. It's okay, it's okay. We're not gonna. We're not right. gonna. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't go to the store to just buy out all the green clothes, though. <laughs> yeah, it's always kind of funny about Power Rangers. Like even when they weren't in their suits, they were wearing like all the same color, the same mm-hmm. color, like shirt, pants, shoes, everything. Like oh, it was yeah. literally like a gang. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like how is it a secret who they are? Like, dude, just yeah, wait, those yeah, five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so those kids are there. In all of Angel Grove, that it's all are coordinated. It's just like they're alter ego all the time. Yeah, <laughs> it's like wait a minute, they're always skipping school. Uh, yeah, they're, they're they're cutting class. They are wait wait wait. They wear the same wait wait. Hold on wait. What are the colors Power Rangers wear? 
Red. Yeah. Green, like, what? What? A, hold on. I'm, wait a minute. I'm pretty sure Tom is a Green Ranger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, wait, yeah. but that girl's wearing a lot of pink. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, something. And she takes archery classes. Wait a minute. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got questions here. But no, yeah. I, even even on that side, though, I love the fact that the the, the influences, uh, the influences are are awesome. And it's um, space operas. You don't see. You really don't see a lot of black people and people of color fronting space operas like it's like it's it's becoming somewhat more uh uh i don't want to say common but you know we're you see it a slight smidge when you get into like the indie sector uh of of and not just in comics but in all media but it really is something that's always kind of bothered me it's like well black people can go to space yeah why why, why can't we be yeah. space captains like like i was at you know, bringing up deep space nine from earlier my wife and i just uh yeah you know, she had never seen deep space uh nine so we were rewatching it and mm. she was like, "Wow, I never realized that we had a we had a we had a black captain. <laughs> we had a whole black captain out here. Nobody's talking about yeah. it. what's going on." <laughs> yeah, but uh, and but that's that's the thing. Like, I I love the fact you guys brought uh you 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 brought us to this point where it's like, oh yeah, man, we we actually have representation out here. Like, it's like I I I. You know what it was? I'll tell you what the feeling it was. You'll probably get where I'm coming from. It was the feeling I got when you see any of this group of black kids just like just coming together to fight the good fight. It was the same feeling I got when I watched the first the first time I saw the trailer uh, for Star Wars The Force Awakens. They they showed Finn with the lightsaber. Not talking about anything that happened after that. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about that. Yeah. Talking about Everything <laughs> came after doesn't exist. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm talking about everything that happened. Like when we when we saw Finn with the lightsaber, I was like, "Oh, they're finally gonna do it!" And we'll just leave the rest of that alone. But yeah. that initial feeling is what I, I was like, "Man, finally, yeah, we can actually you know, get this going." Like for how how does that even feel to to be able to bring that level of representation uh, to comics? Like, what, what does that feel like? <laughs> wow man that's that's a, a, an amazing question um i would say for me um, one of the first times that it really hit me was when i saw okamis mm -hmm. and reading my brother's first comic book it was just like and then actually hearing what people thought about it after they read it mm -hmm. i was like oh this is necessary all right this is paramount for us to continue to fight this good fight right and there's people out there who actually support what we're doing so when it comes when it came to joystick it was just like we we got to continue to do this you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying like obviously it, it's foundational for us to just tell good stories like that's what we want people to know is like this is just a great story mm -hmm. strip away all the other stuff race anything like that it's just an amazing story but we're going to tell the stories about the people that we like to see in these stories all right, so don't get surprised if there's some black people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, it is what it is. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Um, I want to add quickly too that um, you know part of the, the, the whole reason why I created Ray Comics as a, as a publishing company was to tell stories that were not being told. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when Okamas debuted in 2015, there were absolutely zero black Sentai comic books out there at all. There were no Power Ranger comic books at the time when Okamas debuted in 2015. So it's kind of an interesting thing. Like we were already thinking ahead, like Sentai comics, is Sentai is going to come back because at that moment, 2015, Power Rangers were off TV, all of the Sentai shows, VR Troopers, Beetle Wars, all gone. Mm -hmm. And there was no, nothing new being made. So I'm like, it would be really dope if there were Black folks in the Sentai space, but it was only about them. It wasn't just a team about our multicultural team is more just about us. Right. So Ultimus drops in 2015, shortly after, um, you know, a whole bunch of other series like that start popping up left and right. Um, and for us, it was the same thing with Joystick Angels. Like we don't mm -hmm. see enough space operas with young black kids, you know, just doing cool stuff, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Existing right. in this futuristic space. So it's, part of our makeup as a company to tell those stories and do stuff that no one else is doing. 
I mean, I, I, I feel like if you were, if we were having this discussion and I was making another comic book about ancient Egypt, it'd be a whole different conversation <laughs> because you've probably seen a million comic books like that before. Over the last yeah. decade, there's been thousands. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's okay. So with, and then that is actually a crying shame because it's the same way I feel about movies and TV shows. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, oh, hey, yeah, we got this new movie coming out. It's about black people. Well, what, what's going on? It oh, you know, just black suffering. Oh, that that's all. Okay, cool. That's nice. Uh, what 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 are the characters? Are oh, they slaves? Oh, haven't seen that before. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait. It's a it's a story about a kid who who's from the hood. Oh, okay. Well, what does what he do? Oh, he's playing basketball, just trying to get out of the hood. Oh, that's nice. We've seen all these stories. We've seen all these stories before. Uh, you know, like what you're talking about, you know, I, I, I want to see, I want to see more, I want to see more advancement, you know, I like, well, I think that, you know, well, you know, of course the opportunities are popping up more, where we're seeing more black creatives coming out and putting their stories out there. I'm kind of at a point where like, I'm tired of seeing black suffering. I'm tired of seeing, you know, nice. uh, be a black and brown cares. Oh, it's just a sl- they're, they're they're slaves. Uh, this is a story yeah. about slaves, or oh, this is a story about a kid you know from the hood just trying to you know uh, make ends meet and, and get out, and he plays basketball and he's trying to get that scholarship, or you know we're trying to save the rec center. I, I'm I'm tired of seeing those. I've, I've seen it a million times. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I, I want something else. You know what I'm saying? Like, like honestly, the. Ever so often, you know, we get you know, creatives who come along and give like a breath of fresh air. Like, uh, you know, a lot of people like to joke about it, but I mean, I always think about like Barry Gordy's Last Dragon. That's the first time I'd ever seen, uh, you know, a black character like it, like being the lead of a kung fu movie, even if yeah. it was silly, you know, or goofy. Just, it was still it was cool, and that's what I think we need to strive more towards is like, yeah, we need to see more, you know, black characters in space operas, uh, you know, in Kung Fu martial arts, uh, whatever, you know, doing Sentai stuff, you know, doing stuff that, you know, black people can do it too. Damn it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't just play basketball and rap and, and be yeah. slaves, you know, just like, <laughs> like, Jesus, give us something else, man. We, we, Come on. <laughs> 2021, man. Let's well, do it. I, I just I just find it interesting because you know, when you, you think about something like ancient Egypt stories, like there's mm-hmm. so many other incredible, powerful, and, and like robust kingdoms within the continent that is Africa. Why just continue to focus on one and over and over and over again? Mm-hmm. So, so I said, like there's so many other creators that are doing the opposite of that. And those to me are the most exciting books because there's just mm-hmm another piece of the story that you, you that you don't know mm. and you get to learn about which is really exciting right now this is something i think that a lot of people aren't gonna uh uh a lot of people don't know about this and i know uh y'all talked about you know having experience in the industry and a lot of people and that's something i always find very interesting that a lot of people don't understand how the industry works and more importantly what it takes to make something like I always tell people because you know a lot of folks come all the time saying hey man I got this idea and man I just want to I, I want to make this idea thing and I'm always just kind of like all right we'll just you know do the thing it's uh I mean not saying it's that simple but you know the the sooner you get started you know the sooner you'll be yeah. you'll 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 actually be there but you know just be prepared right. for a lot of hard work but like what what was the because I can only imagine just running a Kickstarter alone, uh, the stress level that comes with that. But uh, <laughs> yeah. like, what was like, what was the like, what was that like? Like, what was it like, you know, uh, putting all this together, uh, you know, and, 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 and building this up from, you know, for all intents and purposes from the ground up? Yeah, that's a great question, man. Um, one of my old art professors had said something during, uh, well, I was having an exhibition my senior year of college, and it's kind of what you do to get your Bachelor of Fine Arts degree. And, um, you know, someone had asked me, he's standing right next to me, and then uh, someone walks into the gallery and says, oh, how long did this piece take you? And, you know, they kind of said it in a joking way. So he, you know, being very defensive of all of his students, it's like, oh, this took him, you know, you know, 20 years and six hours, you know what I'm saying? Like, Mm. so the concept of is that 
the piece that you're seeing or what you're seeing in front of you currently mm-hmm. is something that's been a culmination of everything that we've done and everything mm-hmm. we've gone through for the past 10, 20, 30 years or however long you've been working at this craft of art and comics or drawing or music or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so really and truly, Joystick Angels is, is kind of one of those things where we are getting a lot more you know, uh, how do you say it? Like we're, we're in this race. We're already on the track. We're running. We were already doing that with Okemos and our other titles that are in development, but now we're just starting to hit our stride a little bit. So mm. the, the idea for joystick angels came together relatively quickly, yeah. but mm. it's really because we're, we've been putting in the work on other books. So we're kind of, our swords are very sharp at the moment. Yeah. It's probably the best analogy I could put. Yeah. It. Mm. Well, I mean, yeah, you like, like you, know, this is, you pretty much everyone I think you know, can can probably relate to the idea that like you know, when you have like an you have ideas in your head, you know, like you, you have this thing where it's like you know all right well I have I have an idea and you're always kind of baking it yeah it's always kind of to some degree or another whether you're actively working on it whether it's on the back burner the front burner or whatever you're putting some kind of effort into it even if it's you know subconsciously so yeah no nah, that that totally that that totally makes sense um now for me just because you know once again i i used to be a pretty avid uh uh kickstarter website browser and backer all this behind me is all Kickstarter stuff. Uh, <laughs> everything just about on the shelf behind me is all Kickstarter. Wow! Uh, like just various and sundry. I have a I have a huge problem. The, the most important thing there in there though is the fridge. So thank you. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, you you you, you, ha- you you have to stay. You just you. The kitchen's on the other side of the house. I'm lazy. Uh, uh. <laughs> I didn't get I didn't get this thick uh, uh, on accident. Oh, no, so this is a serious uh, yeah. main cave. I had a serious main cave like yours. I need a fridge, a pool yeah. table, or something. I, I mean, you're inspiring me right now. That's all. I I, I don't look. It, it's it's a sad thing to say, but behind me is a board game table. That that's my problem. Uh, no, that, that's, <laughs> but I like but that one of the things that I think people don't appreciate is. The the journey that you start uh, when you put together uh, a Kickstarter because it's it's not necessarily difficult, but it's not necessarily easy either. <laughs> There's a lot of work that has to go into it, and uh, um, like you know, one of the things I actually thought that y'all did with your Kickstarter that I'm not going to say I don't necessarily see other creatives do, but it's something I wish I saw more of. And uh, it was uh, when I was looking at your stretch goals for uh, for the project, one of the things that leapt out of me and kind of made me go. I like I really like like you know, comic and story and you know, everything else. Side, yes. Awesome. But it would make me go, you know what? I like what these guys are doing. Uh, and it was that I, I, I can't remember exactly what the. Um, uh what the what the number stretch goal was but i remember seeing that uh or wait i have it right here in front of me when y'all hit 10,000 um that it it was a, a thing you had where it was like a higher page rate of yeah. the uh creative team and i was like you know what cuz 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 people have this poor misconception <laughs> about what art cost <laughs> and uh i see it all the time where i see people like oh man uh man i, I want to try and get so and so and so so do a book for me but they told me it was going to cost them this this that and the third i'm like sounds like industry standard to me <laughs> but I, I thought that was really cool that y'all did that like 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 y'all are y'all actually you were making everything like hey we're getting this extra bread let's take care Let's take care of the creative team. And that was like literally, I think, the first stretch goal, which I thought was really awesome. So I, yeah, like I tip, I don't have a hat, but if I had one, I would tip it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but what led into like the, 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 what inspired those types of uh, decisions? Like just, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it's probably just general good hearted and decency, but, uh, <laughs> but I would let you say it in your own words. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you know, honestly, man, like we, um, 
we, you know, we were really fortunate with this team. I mean, you know, so if anybody is kind of, you know, we're listening to this interview and watching us as we're talking, like Okamis was really the brainchild of, of, of me, myself, TJ Sterling, the present lead artist to break comics. So I wrote it, I drew it. And then, you know, I hired a colorist and a letterer to do their thing, but it was really my entire vision. It's the very first idea I had for a comic book. So I did so much leg work on it. I put so much into it and I understood how hard that work was just to be able to do a comic book, to get it done. Um, and, and I just gained a larger appreciation for the mechanics of it when you are an artist. So since I've continued to build, you know, my company, Ray Comics, and I'm building my team and I'm doing more and more stories where I'm serving just as a writer and a creative director, I, I know what it takes to put a book together and, and how tough it can be. So when we started getting these pages in from our artists and they were really, really working hard and we just were incredibly appreciative, man, because the work is, the pencil art is incredible by itself. But when the colors came in and then we started seeing, you know, some of the edited and the, the updated script from, you know, our editor, Dr. Shamika Mitchell, like they really believed in the vision and they really put their all into it and went above and beyond. So we wanted to do anything we could to kind of honor them and show them, hey, we don't want this just to be a flash in the pan one time thing. We want to work with you guys for as long as humanly possible. Yeah. And we want to take care of you. We want you to know that this is your home and you can feel respected, honored and appreciated, not only with words, but with actions here at Ray Comics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude, I like that. I appreciate that. <laughs> I can appreciate that because and, and, and I'm going to all once again, yeah, for those of you who are if you're just listening to this, I apologize. You uh, go go to raycomics.com. You'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, when you when you talked about Okamas, one of the things that that popped to me, like especially you, you say that you, know, you like you went in on this, you're know, writing and doing pencils, uh, pencils on this like this is a slouch work. Like this is this is actually good, like like really good. Like just that's time that takes a lot of time uh, and right. effort and energy. And the fact that you you all looked at that and said, you know, hey, let's let's make sure, you know, we we take care of the people who, who are you know, putting in the putting in the work. Uh, so, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, a, a lot of folks understand like, you know, and, and I, I try and explain to people whenever every chance I get. But uh, if you go out there and look into the wider, you know, mainstream, you know, comics, whatever, you know, you'll see lots of people who are working all over the place from like, you know, you got people that they're doing work in Marvel, but they're also doing work in DC. They're also doing work in Image. They're doing work in Boom Studios. They're working all over the place because honestly, while they do make, you know, uh, while they do make money doing what they do, a lot of times you, you kind of have to do a lot of work if you want to, you know, maintain. Uh, okay. just because it, it's, it just is what it is. It's the nature of the beast. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of people never understand that. They just assume, oh, every artist out there is rich. <laughs> no, no. Like, no. Nah. <laughs> Psych. <I know. laughs> Not quite the case. Um, another thing I want to bring up, too, is with uh, with Okamas, y'all actually had a real, like, uh, you know, I don't know if y'all are y'all going to do like a like a late pledge uh or, or anything like the kickstarter or, or, or anything like that a late pledge, uh, a late pledge or you're, you're talking about um a, a post campaign mm. pre-order situation yes. for acoustic angels mm. oh. um yeah we are i mean again by the time everyone listens to this email uh, to this message we know you're going to be able to click a link that's on the Ray Comics website. And you're going to be able to pre-order anything that was on the Kickstarter uh, through the Ray Comics site. You know, there's obviously a little bit of time, you know, to finish production X, Y, and Z. But uh, yeah, you, and you'll also through the Ray Comics site be able to get you know previous books X, Y, and Z and everything that you guys might want. Because I thought that was one of the things I actually thought was really cool too. Is that y'all had like bundles and stuff like that. Really, like, oh, if you want this, you can get this. If you want this, you can get that. If you want to check out some of our original stuff, you can go check out that. And I thought it was really cool because you know, just it's it's one of those deals where like you know, you're like, oh man, I'm discovering this company that you know, I didn't know was a thing before, and I want to I want to go ahead and get all in. So I thought that was really cool that y'all offered that. The all just y'all aside from that too, you had some really cool stuff too. Y'all had like lots of awesome like variants. Uh, different options for like you know, uh, digital and print, uh, and uh, just I was like, oh my god, 
<laughs> like y'all actually y'all really had it laid out. <laughs> And I think there was even uh, an option for like um, music as well. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, what was going on there with the um, of the music option? Yeah, of course, man. So um, obviously, uh, you know, since we wrote the the comic book together um, during the process, um, we thought it would be cool to actually have an original soundtrack. Mm-hmm. So that's what I do. I mean, at, you know, I'm I'm actually the lead producer and artist at Knit Music, so mm-hmm. it just kind of made sense. For the entire thing to come together because the, the theme or, or one of the themes of the book is that that these these characters love music they really love music and then even like some throwback type of music you can see it in like the clothes that they wear and then just like some of the scenes you'll, you'll see you'll actually see it more through the book but um and then i so i have um a soundtrack that um i composed for you guys and then also as you know, one of the tiers was my entire music catalog, which is over a hundred songs and not just my music, some other people that I collaborated with too. You know what I'm saying? So it it, it was just like, you know, when we were putting the tiers together, it was like, okay, what can we actually do to add more value to this? And it's just like, okay, well, here's a tier with the music. Here's a tier with a physical CD. Here's a tier with, you know, other creators, you know, all this other stuff. So it just came together naturally, man. Dude, I love it. Uh, I I love to see it. <laughs> I love to see it. Just like yeah. I, I and I've, I've talked about this in the past uh, uh, with with other creatives that have done, that have put work on Kickstarter. Like that's just one of the things I love uh, seeing in that spectrum is uh, creativity. Like seeing different stuff being put out there, you know, when you have like, like, it, it, regardless of whatever it is, like just knowing that people actually sat down, like, hey, look, what, 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 what can we do to give you the best, uh, you know, bang for your buck? Like, what, what, what can we put out there that's gonna, you know, give you maximum value, uh, for yeah. what it is you're putting in? So I, I always, I always, uh, thousand percent, uh, appreciate that. Um, now, uh, w- Going from and I don't, I don't want to say too much about because I don't, we don't want to give up we don't give away anything. Um, as far as like the future of Joystick Angels, is there anything that you could maybe give us some hints, uh, maybe some maybe like a tease or something about what we could expect to see uh, for uh, a Joystick Angels uh, number two. Absolutely. Um, so just to give everyone a quick synopsis of what, you know, Joystick Angels is about. Uh, Joystick Angels is a YA sci-fi space opera comic series about five young kids who are tasked with saving the universe from an evil alien empire. Um, issue one kind of opens up where you actually get introduced to these, these five characters and, you know, you see them basically competing for the opportunity to fight this alien race. Um, and it's, basically become a militaristic type of society that they live in and uh they are all competing for supremacy and through this competition called the quantum elite space tournament so whoever wins that tournament gets to lead lead the charge against the yukaria and fight them now a little bit of story behind the yukaria the yukaria is a parasitic alien empire that essentially is like a high-minded virus that is only concerned with one thing and that's survival so they go to planet to planet absorbing resources other creatures into you know into their entire horde and then moving on and that's what happens with earth earth becomes destroyed and now these people are living on a space vessel in deep space um and again it's become a militaristic society so that's a little bit of issue one issue two we get deeper into some of those responsibilities what that looks like Eventually, there's going to be lots of conflicts with the Yukari. We're going to do lots of interesting things with space travel. Um, we're going to experiment more with blending music and art and you know digital comics together. So there's quite a few things that we're inspired to do that we are going to play with. I mean, again, we might just start transforming those planes because you guys want them. <laughs> <laughs> it's not off the table. Hey, I'm just uh, saying, y'all heard it here first. You heard it here first. Yeah. It, it, Blurred.com, Blurred Without Fear. Hey. He made it, he, he's going to make it happen for us. Uh, <laughs> it, it, look, we, we, we're, we're trying here. I'm, you see what I'm doing here? I'm, I'm trying to... We're, I'm gonna keep working on them. I'm gonna keep working on. Them. We're gonna get those. We get those transforming planes. Um, 
the other thing I wanted to ask, uh, too, was, yeah, because a lot of times you never know uh, with the state of, uh, of comics and uh, especially with uh, you see, it's a lot with the indies now uh, more recently. Uh, you know, there's always, you know, some studio, there's always some, you know, uh, producer, agent, whoever, who is just sitting there waiting around the corner, just waiting for like, you know, the next uh the you know the next big thing the next big hit whatever uh yeah we've seen this with comics like uh hell we've seen this with bitter root uh which is uh you know going from being a comic to being a movie we've seen this with a lot of other image titles where people are coming in they're they're, they're you know netflix comes in they sweep it up and they say hey we want to make a movie we want to make a tv show we want to make cartoon. Is that something that y'all have considered as well? Like if y'all consider the possibilities of like, you know, if you, you can get joystick angels out there to have it become this, you know, this big, uh, like bigger than comics thing. Like have y'all thought about that. Yeah, man. Um, one of the things that, um, that I've been getting a lot, or at least when I when was talking to people about the Kickstarter, they were looking at the imagery Mm-hmm. And a lot of the 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 actual like the the comic book pages we had on the Kickstarter page, and they're like, "Man, are you guys doing animation, or is this a video game, or something <laughs> like that?" And, and like that's naturally where their mind went. So I'm just like, "Okay, we must be doing something right because obviously the inspiration is there. Mm-hmm. It just naturally came out that way, man." But to answer your question, yes, you know that's definitely something that we would consider seriously. And, you know, we would love to bring it to you guys that way because it, it kind of seems like that's just a natural progression for something like this. Mm-hmm. You know, not only because of the story, but with people's just awareness around stories like this. It's just like, look, if you're not on board with something like this, it's like it, there's, there's kind of a, a little bit of a problem. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just like we need y'all to get behind something like this so we can, you know, take it to Netflix and all these other these bigger studios who will do something with a story like ours, you know? But yeah, man, I would definitely say we would do something like that. Man, I would love to see it. I would love to see it. That, that, just like what you said, like I, I had the same vibe. Uh, yeah. when, I, when I first landed on the Kickstarter page, I didn't even pay attention to you know, what was you know, the, the category or whatever. I just saw artwork and I looked, I was like, is that anime? <laughs> 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 I was like, wait a minute, I'll- like, hold on, wait. He, they, they, they didn't tell him this was anime. Hold on, let me see. What, what we got yeah, yeah. And then, you know, but but no, that's thing. Like, like it's you know, we're in that day and age right now where, I mean, yeah, anime has been a popular commodity. Uh, animated series have been around for you know decades. It's not night. It's nothing new. But it seems like nowadays the go to medium to get things right uh, when it comes to uh, uh, taking properties from like the comics. Uh, or the video games, whatever, and then bringing them to a digestible media that pretty much anybody can enjoy. Uh, like we see with Castlevania, where like like my wife, not a video game player, n- knows fuck all about Castlevania. However, <laughs> really enjoys the anime. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just just as an example. Um and I've seen that a lot with you know, with a lot of the properties. Like you know, it, it, I don't know, it's something about it when it, when you can digest that you know, creativity in another format. It, you know, it, another case in point, uh, yeah, you know, we had the recent, you know, what was it, Invincible on Amazon Prime, mm-hmm. where uh, a comic that I have been telling people about for years, and say, dude, man, y'all might want to go check this comic out, and yeah. then people are like, ah, oh, nah, 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 nah. And then next, you know, the, the, the shit hits Amazon Prime and it's like crack. Everybody's just like, oh, man, we can I get some more of that Invincible season two? Where's that at? You know, yeah. like everybody's mm-hmm. talking about it. it's the most memeable thing. And and, and that's thing I, 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 I have this you know, uh, suspicion that when you know, when it comes to stuff like this, yeah, there's always someone that's like, hey, when can we get that next thing? And, you know, whether you know, whether it's Amazon, Netflix, you know, uh, Hulu, whoever, you know, whatever, you know, just it, it's it's one of the things I always tell people like, man, dude, yeah, that you always kind of want to have that in mind because you never know like that. that could, It could happen. You never know. I, I could very yeah. easily see uh, like like honestly, if, if y'all came back to me like next week, said, hey, yo, man, uh, 
uh, Netflix just picked us up, I'd be like, I, it took them this long? <laughs> Word. That's the question I would be asking. Word. <laughs> they just now got to you? Okay, all right. Well, <laughs> I guess they're slacking I, I wanna, this week. <laughs> I was going to just add to that, Ernie, mm-hmm. that, uh, oh, man. you know, the, the other fun meme that I love about the Invincible thing that there is like, three or four compendiums of uh, Invincible. And literally, it's literally like a, a stack that's like, mm. I don't know, like three feet tall. Mm. And then there's like a, a little arrow that says this much out of like this much has been made from, made into the animation. Yeah. So what I loved what Robert Kirkman did because he did it smart, he built an entire library of story. Mm. So when he could come to the table and say, hey, look, you know, I've already had a successful thing with Walking Dead. You know, it's a tried and true thing. I've got this, you know, amazing comic series that's our, that's got over, you know, 200, I think 180 issues or something wow. crazy. It's got yeah, lots like and lots. yeah, about around 180, I think, give or take. Wow. Yeah. And, and tons of ton, a huge fan base behind Invincible for like two decades. Like mm-hmm. I can give you guys something that's literally fully packaged. And that's why I say like, I would love to give you Joystick Angels right away to to, to Netflix, but we've got one comic. Just yeah. give me a okay. couple of years to like come out with like a, a few more, maybe mm-hmm. finish the first arc with, you know what I'm saying? So then it's like we can sit back and like, okay, what story do you guys feel like doing? Like, because mm-hmm. the conversations I've had with a lot of these um, these uh, movie industry type companies is, is always the same. How much IP do you have? How much story do you have? You know, because a lot of times what's interesting, too, is that um, they don't necessarily want you to come on as the writer, even if it's Mm -hmm. your story. They want like a Hollywood writer who's seasoned and does that for a living Mm -hmm. to adapt your script. That's why you always hear the word, oh, the script is the movie was adapted from a script, adapted from a play because you have an official big wig writer come in. They do all the stuff and, you know, jazz it up for Hollywood. So, but they need a lot of, you know, story to kind of figure something out. You know what I'm saying? So just a little interesting behind the scenes. Look oh, about yeah. That. oh yeah. No, that, well, and it's, it's, it's very, it's, it's one of those things that's, that's very interesting to me. It's always interested me when it comes to that sort of thing, because yeah, when you have, we, we really think about it. You have this thing. This massive thing. It, it's the same that we've seen this with the boys uh, on Amazon. Yeah, it's like the boys ran for God, I don't remember exactly how many issues, but it's like, yeah, they had a ton of IP stacked up that you could say, I can take it or I can leave it. And or I can take the parts I want and I can throw away the parts I don't want. Or, you know, you look like once again with uh, with Invincible, almost 200 some odd issues. And that's not even including all the side story stuff that they did. Uh, the Correct. Walking Dead, which I think, my God, is somehow inexplicably uh, uh, over. Mm-hmm. I think it's I think I don't camera if they ever cracked 200 issues or not. But just you know, you think about the stuff and you go like, oh, man, yeah, they just kind of do whatever they want. They're just taking pieces of, like, yeah, what are we doing for next season? All right, we'll take this part from over here. Take that part from over there. Um, but yeah, now that, that I totally understand though. Yeah. But, but we, but we're going to get, we're going to get joystick angels there. I'm just going to let y'all know now we're going we're gonna to get it. Oh, yeah, we, we may wait. We're going to wait till the numbers, right? And wait till the numbers, yeah, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. But no, uh, I just want to say it. So like just, uh, a hundred percent, uh, for those, if you, if you're not, you haven't done so yet, if you, 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 you missed it. How, whatever the case is, uh, please, uh, by all means, uh, go to raycomics.com. Please go and check out this awesome stuff that these brothers have going on over here. It is like no joke. It's amazing. It is really amazing and very special. And you'll say y'all are going to have the pre-orders and stuff opened up. Uh, with the, like, like what was like a, a what's what's a good time frame? Uh, well, we have, um, create a pre-order page, you know, right after this conversation. So, I mean, I imagine yeah. when, you, when you post the video, yeah. pre-order page. Yeah. So let's see. Okay. So, guys, you go to raycomics.com and there's an actual tab that says mm-hmm. Kickstarter. You click on that tab. Typically, that's where I put like, you know, mailing list stuff. But if you click on Kickstarter, there's going to be a whole bunch of pre-order items there. And that's the the two different variant cover-ish uh, editions, um, cover A, cover B. 
One covers by the Zong Brothers, the other covers by uh, Mr. Marcus Williams. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be uh, digital stuff that's available. There's going to be the OST, um, mm -hmm. the, the soundtrack available too. We'll have some t-shirts up there. So everything that is on the Kickstarter, you will be able to get through the um, my website, raycomics.com. Um, on the Kickstarter tab, you will get it for pre-order and you can just join the Kickstarter group because we haven't started shipping yet. So it's perfect time. Awesome. So yeah, y'all heard it. Y'all know what you got to go do. Start clicking the buttons. Y'all know. Y'all know what time it is. Uh, <laughs> y'all know what time it is. Get 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 on it. Um, yeah. And I also want to say too. Did y'all have any other? Uh, did y'all have any other things that y'all wanted to plug? I mean, we we know we got we know we got the uh, uh, we know we got joystick angels, but yeah, we talked about Okamus. Y'all have any? Are y'all going to be doing any more with that project as well? Or y'all have any other projects coming up uh, that y'all can talk about? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Okamus is planned for six issues. I'm actually halfway done with drawing issue number five right now. So okay. if you want to get into the Okamus series, there's currently quite a bit of content. You've got issues zero, one, two, three, and four. So a total of five books at the moment that are available for purchase, digital or print. Um, everything's in stock currently. Um, and then Okamus number five, which would technically be the sixth book in this particular series, is going to be dropping probably in about August of this year. Well, July, August, right around that time. So you'll get another comic book in the continuation of that series this year. Um, and then we're going to be our uh, drawing issue five of Okamus. I'm sorry, issue six of Okamus, the final one in the first arc. And that will debut next year. So that's what's on the, the docket for that. Dude. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> And hey, since um since we had that uh, that special Memorial Day sale, mm -hmm. um my next album, Rapping Diva, like that'll be out in August. Mm -hmm. So that's just something that I'm writing and I'm recording at the moment. But um you know since people were really showing love for the project, I'm gonna make it a, a lot more robust than I originally had intended to. So. You know, we're, we're, we're probably going to do about 20 to 24 songs. Um, I'll probably do half of that by August and then I'll send the rest of it by the end of the year. But okay. um, yeah, man, just and then constantly, you know, creating music. Um, I've already started on more music for the next Joystick Angels project. So just constantly working and composing, man. Hey, the hustle never stops. <laughs> yes, real quick, ladies and gentlemen, because Joystick Angels number one is done mm -hmm. and it just has to go to print, essentially, and we're kind of reviewing final production right now. Joystick Angels 2 is going to go into production probably in the next month or two. Right. Script's yeah. already done. We already have pretty much all the assets we need to pay our art team. So our art team gets paid and then Joystick Angels 2, issue 2 goes into production. So that'll probably be ready by like the fall of 2022 if not a little bit sooner so okay. that book will be available right around the corner as well dude the hustle i respect it all respect day it. <laughs> <laughs> well i said i do i want to get you guys i want to get you guys back on with uh uh you know, when y'all get ready to uh to unveil that that like i said i i love what you guys are doing it's something really special and Thank uh, you, man. like it Appreciate just it's you, it's nice to see it's just really nice to see stories like like you know, stories out there that that are representing black and brown and are are doing it not just you know, in the the stereotypical way where it's like oh you know uh, you know, we we we're bringing this black kid with like not that I don't not that I dislike black kids with lightning powers just saying <laughs> but just, you know, uh, we're, we're doing something fresh we're doing something fresh I'm not hating on you know, yes, you know, yeah. I don't want anybody to think I'm hating on anything specific I'm just saying. I, I, I thought it was really awesome that you know we could see you know uh, you know something that was off the beaten path. It's not the same old, same old, same old uh, that we've been seeing. The same old can of sardines we've been eating for the past twenty, thirty, forty, fifty years in comics. We're actually seeing something fresh. And uh, like I said, y'all y'all have made me a fan. Y'all have made me a fan. Uh, just you, know, y'all are awesome. <laughs> y'all are y'all are really awesome. But that said, uh, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Guys, thank you so much uh, for sitting down with me and and having this conversation and just kicking it with us. And like I said, folks, y'all know what to do. Links in the description below. Pin comment below if you're watching this uh, on YouTube. 
Whatever the case, y'all know what time it is. We will be back again. Trust me. And uh, thank you guys for keeping it plus ultra with Blur Without Fear. We'll be out here. Peace. Take it easy, y'all.